The iPhone 14 Pro Max is the kind of phone that reminds you that Apple still knows how to surprise and delight at a time that a lot of people are questioning whether or not they should even upgrade. Take the Dynamic Island. This replacement for the notch expands and contracts with alerts and live updates, delivering everything from sports scores and directions to music playback and timers. And it does so in an elegant way. The iPhone 14 Pro Max also impresses with its always-on display, as well as its 48 megapixel camera and action mode video. Add in epic battery life and you could have one of the best phones of the year. But not everything is great about this $1,100 flagship. Here's the pros and cons in my iPhone 14 Pro Max review. When using the iPhone 14 Pro Max for my review, I noticed two things. One is that the notch has been replaced by a pill-shaped cutout, more on Dynamic Island later. And the second is that the camera bump is even bigger. All three lenses on the back of the iPhone 14 Pro Max are larger, as is the flash, so this area takes up a lot of room. This is a slightly heavier and thicker phone than its predecessor too. The iPhone 14 Pro Max measures 0.31 inches thick and weighs 8.47 ounces, compared to 8.46 ounces and 0.3 inches thick for the iPhone 13 Pro Max. There are four color options, deep purple, silver, gold, and space black. I'm partial to the deep purple as it pops the most and that's the one I tested out for this review. I continue to appreciate the matte glass back and the color matched polished steel sides. The overall look is elegant, if a bit too familiar with the same IP68 water resistance. So what's missing? That will be the SIM card tray. Apple has removed this feature for US models, replacing it with eSIM. The good news is that we found it quite easy to add a line to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And you can have two active numbers at once, say one personal and one for business. The bad news is that some carriers don't yet support eSIM, so you'll need to check if your provider is compatible before you travel overseas. Now, this is innovative. The iPhone 14 Pro Max doesn't just move the notch down, it reimagines the entire area. Think of it as a mini dashboard for the notifications and alerts that you need without having to jump into dedicated apps. If you open up Apple Music or Spotify, for example, and then swipe back up to the home screen, you'll see the album art displayed on the left and a mini waveform on the right. And if you press and hold, a larger window will pop up showing the track progress and playback controls. Or you can press once just to launch the app. There's lots of other apps that take advantage of Dynamic Island. You can see the status of your timer, the next direction in maps, incoming and outgoing call status, and more. You can even have two live activities displayed side by side in the island. Later this year, Apple will make a Live Activities API available to developers to deliver more Dynamic Island experiences like sports scores, food delivery status, ride sharing info, and more. The uses of Dynamic Island extend to other activities as well, such as Face ID, and the animations are fluid without being intrusive. This is just a killer feature and frankly a good reason to get the iPhone 14 Pro over the regular iPhone 14. Apple is definitely playing catch up to Android when it comes to the always on display for the iPhone 14 Pro Max but it actually offers a more robust experience if you're willing to put in some extra work. Because the iPhone 14 Pro Max can scale all the way down to one hertz, Apple designed its always on display to essentially mirror the lock screen. It's in color, but at a much lower brightness level. So you can still see your wallpaper, widgets like weather calendar and activity ring, and notifications coming through. In a way, I prefer the simplicity of the Pixel 6 and the Galaxy S22 Ultra with their always on displays but I like that there's more customization options for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Otherwise, the iPhone 14 Pro Max's Super Retina XDR display is amazingly bright and vivid. In fact, this panel is rated for up to 1600 nits of brightness with HDR content and 2000 nits outdoors and bright sunlight. This panel dazzled as I zoomed in on footage of a fountain, as I could make out the drops of water hitting the pool below and creating a fizzy bunch of bubbles. And I got lost in the tropical paradise when playing the Air Twister air shooting game with fluid animations to match the 120 hertz ProMotion display. This screen can even make the over-the-top Cobra Kai look good. On our lab test, the iPhone 14 Pro Max reached up to 1565 nits with HDR content, so very close to Apple's claim. By comparison, the iPhone 13 Pro Max hit 1040 nits, and the Galaxy S22 Ultra reached 1359 nits. Samsung's panel is a bit more colorful though. Apple is shaking things up with the iPhone 14 Pro Max's camera system, delivering a 48 megapixel main camera for the first time. And you actually have your choice. You can either use quad pixels, which arranges all of the pictures in 12 megapixel photos for the brightest images possible, or you can go for the Pro Raw format, which gives you a true 48 megapixel image, which is great for cropping in. You have to activate this feature in the settings app, but once enabled, you can toggle between raw and normal pics with ease. 
When I shot a 48 megapixel image of a fire pit area, I could zoom in much more. You can make out more detail in the bricks and the lights atop the circular wall. Just keep in mind that you'll have to process the image afterward for the best results. The 48 megapixel camera also enables a new 2x zoom option that joins the 3x telephoto zoom lens, but you don't get the higher zoom offered by the Galaxy S22 Ultra's 10x dual optical setup. Based on my testing though, I'd say the iPhone 14 Pro Max is the best camera phone you can buy. Let's start with this shot of pansies. The purple and yellow pops more through the Samsung, but there's more details in the petals on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Turning to this shot of peppers, the iPhone 14 Pro Max offers more contrast and depth as you zoom in, and the colors from the S22 Ultra are a bit too oversaturated. I'd give the edge to Apple. With this image of Halloween decorations, the iPhone 14 Pro Max wins in my eyes because the oranges, whites, and sunflowers are more vibrant. And there's a bit of a haze over the S22 Ultra's photo. However, Samsung's phone does a better job illuminating objects in the shadows. In this portrait of me taken at the Manasquan Reservoir, the iPhone 14 Pro Max captures exceptional detail in my shirt, shorts, and face while blurring out the background. The Google Pixel 6 offers a more realistic blue in my shirt though, and takes some of the shine away from my face. The iPhone 14 Pro Max wins this night mode comparison hands down. The stone wall surrounding the fire pit is much sharper on the iPhone, and the green cushions and surrounding lights are just brighter. If you want to use a flash, the new 9 LED flash delivers better results, as you'll see in this photo of Star Wars figurines, the iPhone 14 Pro Max does a better job showing the striations in Darth Vader's outfit, and it's a truer black. One area where the Galaxy S22 Ultra still wins is zoom. At 15x, you can make out more detail in this gross silver and orange slug, and the bark in the tree is sharper too. Last but not least, both the iPhone 14 Pro Max and Galaxy S22 Ultra capture a pleasing selfie. I give the nod to the iPhone with its better detail in my hair, face, and shirt. Samsung's pick is a bit hazy. When it comes to video capture, there's two main upgrades on the iPhone 14 Pro Max that you need to know about. One is action mode, and the other is bumped up 4K resolution and cinematic mode. With action mode, all you need to do is toggle a button when you're recording to smooth out the action, and it works very well. To test out action mode, I first recorded a clip running up a small incline on a trail. With action mode off, the camera shook so much it was dizzying but with the effect on, my ascent looks silky smooth, almost like I was using a gimbal. Just note that the resolution is capped at 2.8K as Apple crops in on the footage to make the effect work. When I compared the iPhone 14 Pro Max action mode versus the Galaxy S22 Ultra super steady mode, I found that both phones offered smooth footage when running down a hill to a bridge. The clip did look steadier on the iPhone than the Samsung. The jump to 4K for cinematic mode is another nice upgrade. This footage of me walking down a nature path looks nearly movie studio quality. The overall video quality from the iPhone 14 Pro Max is stellar, as evidenced by footage I captured of a fountain. The rushing water and green moss look professional grade, despite a bit of lens flare. And Apple has made stepping between zoom levels smoother than before. The iPhone 14 Pro Max's A16 Bionic is Apple's first chip built using the four nanometer process, and it's once again the fastest processor in a phone. The CPU is rated to be only 10% faster, but it offers 50% more memory bandwidth, which aids gameplay. In my testing, I found the iPhone 14 Pro Max wonderfully responsive, whether I was bouncing between lots of apps or playing games like Asphalt 9 Legends. Racing on the Himalayas track, I experienced fluid action even with several other cars jostling for first place. On Geekbench 5, which measures overall performance, the iPhone 14 Pro Max hit 1882 in single core and 5,333 in multi-core. That's notably better than the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and it blows away the Galaxy Z Fold 4 and its Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip. The S22 Ultra was even further behind. Turning to graphics, the iPhone 14 Pro Max notched 12,363, or 74 frames per second, on the 3 d Mark Wildlife Unlimited benchmark. The Galaxy S22 Ultra hit 56 frames per second, and last year's iPhone 13 Pro Max hit 68 frames per second. So it's definitely a tick up in graphics performance here. Later this fall, Apple will introduce two new safety features for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. One is emergency SOS via satellite, and the other is crash detection. Emergency SOS combines new antennas and software to connect to satellites when you can't get a cellular or Wi-Fi signal. You'll then get help sent from emergency services directly to your location. The second safety feature is crash detection which uses the iPhone 14's improved accelerometer and gyroscope to detect whether you're in a crash. From there, it can automatically dial emergency services 
as well as notify your emergency contacts. Thanks in part to the iPhone 14 Pro Max's more efficient chip, this phone lasted a very long time on the Tom's Guide web surfing battery test. We're talking between 14 and a half and 15 hours when we consider anything above 11 hours exceptional. This is good enough for the iPhone 14 Pro Max to top our best phone battery life list. Unfortunately, the iPhone 14 Pro Max sticks with 20 watt charging, so it can only get you to 50% in 30 minutes. By comparison, the Galaxy S22 Ultra got to 58% in 30 minutes, and the OnePlus 10 Pro reached 93%, and it got to 55% in just 15 minutes. The iPhone 14 Pro Max is the best big screen phone around, and it justifies the high price with its stellar always on display, the best cameras on a phone, and truly epic battery life. My favorite feature is the dynamic island because it gives you the bits of information that you need without having to jump from app to app. And it's gonna get even better when more developers hop on the bandwagon. There are some things that I don't like about the iPhone 14 Pro Max. One is the overall heft. Second, you're not getting fast charging, which is a bummer. And while I can live without the SIM card slot, there's gonna be some international travelers who are annoyed. Overall, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is a powerhouse of a phone, but it's also a joy to use. In fact, based on my testing, I think it's the best phone, period. Check out our full review at tomsguide.com and be sure to follow us at Tom's Guide on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. This is Mark Spoonauer.